Hello, I'm Lilia Rivera, president of the Filipino Fiesta of Sacramento. Our community has been celebrating the anniversary of the Philippine Independence Day for over 40 years now, every first Sunday in June. The steering committee picks a theme for the celebration by honoring a person or a group for their outstanding achievement and services to the community. Due to restrictions from COVID-19, the steering committee decided to continue bringing together families and friends to the groups of the community by the use of social media. Three weekly events are scheduled prior to June 6. They are all related to the team selected, a Harana honoring healthcare heroes. May 16 is a movie showing of Harana. May 23, a showcase for Filipino arts and Filipino artists. May 30, we pay tribute to our frontline workers with a documentary of the history of Filipino nurses. Then on June 6, an award ceremony will be at Jose Rizal Center for the heroes selected to represent different workplaces and various professions in caregiving for COVID-19. On behalf of the Filipino Fiesta Steering Committee, I express our deepest appreciation and thanks to our community partners for their sponsorships. They are SMAD, Kaiser, the California Mentor, Seafood City, Eastlawn Memorial Park, and Crossings TV. Maraming salamat po. Hello, good evening. Magandang gabi. Thank you for joining us for the second pre-event for Filipino Fiesta. I'm Vin Salas, Arts Programmer for Philippine National Day Association, Lahi Arts. During these challenging times, artists, along with our frontliners, have provided for us hope and inspiration that we would like for you to experience tonight. Most of the artists featured here have been part of the last three seasons of PNDA Lahi Arts, either in digital or in-person formats. The virtual concert that you are about to see is in a virtual format. These artists range from the traditional to more contemporary expressions that show diversity, boldness, and thought-provoking creative outputs. Salamat and enjoy the showcase. Kuratsa it brings me back to the memories of childhood when we played for weddings and we used the group we call it Comparsa that uses the Banduria or other people call it the Rondalia and uh, I used to play the guitar with that group and it has a lot of colorful memories and I remember a very good friend of mine much older than me played the tune like this in the Banduria That's the part of the banduria. Now, for me, as a guitar player, I enjoy playing with him because I can give a kind of support for that tune. That's the Benicia style or Litinia style. And then, what would I do so that it will be a little bit different challenging that two guitars can play together as an ensemble and again I mentioned that just like a cuisine you want to retain its original strain or flavor the taste but you can add anything to make it a little bit more palatable or more delicious it still is whatever we do it still is kuracha it still is the memory of the wedding dance it still is the memory of celebration and joy and beginning of a new life together. Mm -hmm.
Blue Line is a folk song. It's a folk song about courtship. Then arranging it for the guitars, I made it sure that it is a conversation of two instrumentalists with a lot of virtuosic passages so that it can exploit the uh, abilities of the performers and the, uh, to, to uh, make music with their virtuosity and their sensitivity to, uh, to, the, uh, to, the, uh, to the music itself without changing the sentiment or without changing the colors of our own very song. Gro okay. Growing up in this, I even remember seeing this in English. I couldn't believe it, but it is in English in Latin because that's how we were taught. So it goes like this. This kind of yeah. I was poorly born on the side of the mountain. Something like that, okay? And I don't know. So I said, what? In English. Then I grew up, went to Manila, and I heard this. Anong laking hirap So, um, the, the syllabication there is kind of tough because you don't say the word paga isipin. So uh, that because of my Visayan accent, it sounds funny, you know. So, but the Visayan way of playing this, we add a little fair into it. So we call that that kinaskas. So it goes like. That's how it started to evolve into a different kind of uh, interpretation. Now, uh, I was fascinated with this rhythm. But you cannot do that all the time for five minutes. It will be amazingly uh, tedious and, and tiring. So, instead of melody, traditional ligaya, ligaya. But, so what I did I incorporated that tum, tum. you can still hear but you can still you can hear him imagine for two guitars just imagine Ka and Floranti is an amazing virtuoso guitarist and great musician. It's so much fun to play with him. And Lulai is really a true uh, piece, a folk song about courtship and uh, joy. Mm -hmm.
Very uh, famous, uh, popular Kabampagan song. It's a, a song, a child song, Atil Kapong Sing Sing. Atil Kapong Sing Sing is normally uh, sing in a, sung in a tempo like, uh, like this. I don't know the words. So you can hear the lift of that folk song in a tree. Now, in this album, Florante made an amazing uh, arrangement that changes, uh, not changes, but gives a different idiom that speaks the same flavor and language, but the idiom is different. It's kind of uh, very uh, uh, sophisticated and modern. He employs what's called the syncopation of the, the, the emphasis of certain notes. That's how he treated it. So the, the piece becomes different, but it still is very Filipino.
Francesca Gomez. I am a muralist, a sculptor, and installation artist. I was born in the Philippines, raised in the Bay Area, and I now currently reside and practice in Sacramento. Um, I'm also co-owner of 1810 Gallery, an artist-run studio gallery space dedicated to showcasing and uplifting marginalized artists within our community. Um, I'm also part of Trust Your Struggle Collective, which is a collective of muralists, uh, artists, designers, educators, activists, all dedicated to social justice and community empowerment through art. And last year, I had the honor of collaborating with the Philippine National Day Association, Lahi Arts, to curate and produce Kapwa, which is an all Filipina art exhibit that showcases artists of multiple disciplines from printmaking, painting, sculpture, installation, um, all based in the Bay Area, Texas, and Sacramento. In addition to that, the, we had a virtual programming that went alongside the exhibit as well that also showcased other Filipina artists and you know, that also ranged from theater to writing, <clears throat> um, plant medicine, and DJing. So a whole array of talents in one package. And yeah, I'm super honored to share this video with you all today. The video you're about to see is a walkthrough of the exhibit um, and also includes commentary from each artist on a specific piece that they created and I hope you enjoy.
Nikki Waters, and I'm so grateful to be a part of the Kapwa show. I created Marianda Hour specifically for this show. It was inspired by a combination of the desire to recreate my memories of walking through the Palenque in Fort Bonifacio as a child, and my itching desire to mimic a Where's Waldo image. Uh, creating this piece was a labor of love. The task at hand felt daunting until it was complete, but at the same time, extremely fun to pour through my memory banks to recall all the different types of people I'd see while I was strolling through the market. Specifically, the piece that is of me and my partner. Um, I think this has been a long time coming for me personally to be able to express my queerness um, in this way and in these in like an art space in general. And so, I'm really grateful for what the Kapwa show offers in terms of like expanding who our Kapwa is um, and also highlighting many different voices within the community. Um, so for me, it was really important that I highlight um, my queer family, my trans family, my non-binary family, my gender fluid family, um, to also share this really beautiful sacred space of healing with um, them and with all of our queer Philippinex ancestors before us who paved the way for us as well. Um, this piece is an offering and an altar to those ancestors and also to future generations as like a just a this is us and we are here and we can't wait to see how you will be expanding on what identity means to you and hope that you are given the room that you deserve to grow into whatever you whoever whatever you want to be um and that's what kapa is to me and so thank you for letting me share share my love in this way um yeah, I feel really grateful to be able to also share this beautiful love that um, means so much to me um, and is my kapwa. Um, so yeah, thank you. My name is Marielle Paat. I'm a painter originally from Visalia, California, currently living in San Francisco. In my work, I paint women in my life to explore themes of our Filipina identities through my perspective as a Filipino-American. The theme Kapwa made me reflect on the meaning of community, what that looks like, and how they're formed. The two portraits are the beginning of a series that I plan to continue. The series begins with a portrait of my mom who has the bamboo shoots behind her and her close friend, who we call Auntie Tina, who has the rose behind her. Both my mom and aunt emigrated from the Philippines and had to create their own community and build relationships in this new small city. The plants behind them are meant to represent memories of home and how this idea of home can hit differently for immigrants and children of immigrants. My name is Killjoy and I am so honored to be showing alongside incredible Pinay artists. For Kapwa, I chose to include pieces with themes centered around fire. For me, fire represents the divine feminine. Fire consumes, it burns through, it destroys, and in its wake, the ashes that are left provide nourishment for something new. To me, this is always what the feminine is about. It's about creation. But Hala's daughter and the three sisters came about because of this research project I was doing about the World's Fair that happened in St. Louis, specifically in the Philippines exhibition. And that was back in 1904. I was able to get access to archival photos pre and post the World Fair at the San Francisco Public Library and ran across some images of these individual teens um, from the Cordillera. It 
it's Cordillera is the northern region in the Philippines where the Igorots is a collective name for the tribal indigenous folks that lives in that region. There was a good amount of archival photo collections that they had, but this images of this preteen teenager standing in fierceness in this pose, you know, s some of them with the arm crossed and some of them just looking straight at the camera because it's a fairly new gadget that they've witnessed. Many of them probably have not seen before. I've never had their photos taken. It just really struck me and wanting to know more. So I attempted to research more about this figures and this photos and there was barely, if not, no information at all provided. So I wanted to kind of reclaim their stories and give them names and renamed them after the three deities of Bahala's daughters which is Hanan is the oldest daughter her two other sister is Mayari which is the deity of the moon and then followed by Tala who is the youngest who is the daughter or the deity of the evening star this is kind of a reclamation of, of this nameless young woman whose photos were taken back in the early 19th century and bringing them back to life and renaming them as deities and re renaming them as this kind of supernatural beings in terms of how their image have stand through time and their expressions and their postures and who they are and who we are shouldn't ever remain nameless. My name is Francesca Gomez and this piece is titled Ikao Malakas at Maganda. With this sculpture, I borrow imagery from the Santo Niño, which translates to the Holy Child. Being raised in a Catholic household, this was an image that I was ingrained with. In our home, we always had an altar with photographs of loved ones and candles, images of saints and figurines of the Holy Family. The Santo Niño is a wooden sculpture of Jesus in his youth. Hand-painted and doll-like, he was adorned head to toe with gold and embroidered velvet. I wanted to take this image that I grew up with and redefine what it means for me. Ikao in Tagalog means you, Malakas means strong, and Maganda means beautiful. They were also the names of the first man and woman on earth in our pre-colonial story of creation. I've taken the image of the Santo Niño and replaced it with a brown woman, complete in her being, both strong and beautiful. This piece is also my personal commentary on idolatry. I think about the figures we've been given to worship and ingrain in our culture, and how those images influence how we see ourselves. I want people to see a reflection of themselves in this artwork and recognize their own strength and beauty.
The essential meaning of it is together we rise because if one is brought down, everybody falls, right? Sounds too. I'm a seer. 